So the next addition reaction we're going to look at here is called halogenation. So and halogenation is going to involve either Br2 or Cl2 generally, uh, and it's going to come with what we call an inert solvent. An inert solvent is one that's not going to participate in the chemical reaction, uh, which is true much of the time for solvents, but we have to stress it here because we're going to have a couple of reactions right after this that are going to be analogous but not in an inert solvent. The solvents are actually going to participate. Uh, but your two most common inert solvents are either carbon tetrachloride or dichloromethane here. So those are generally the two that you're likely to see here. Sometimes we just don't even draw the solvent here and we expect you to kind of realize that, oh yeah, Br2 when there's no solvent listed just means Br2 with inert solvent. Uh, and that's the case. But here we're going to add a bromine to both sides in this one. If it was Cl2, we'd be adding a chlorine to both sides. And since we're adding the same thing to both sides here, there's no regioselectivity to address. So we'll find out in a little bit that this goes through a three-membered ring, which we'll call a holonium ion, specifically a bromonium ion in this case, chloronium ion for chlorine. Um, and that's what's going to lead to an anti-addition. We recall earlier we said anytime you go through a three-membered ring in intermediate, when you do backside attack on it, it leads to anti-addition. Uh, so if we kind of take a look at what's going on in this reaction, it's going to be similar to what we saw with mercury earlier. So I'm going to draw some relevant lone pairs on the bromine here. So, but again, as is the first, in the first step of all the alkene reactions, our alkene is the nucleophile. So, and in this case, Br2 is going to be the electrophile here. So, and we're going to go and attack bromine. So it breaks its bond with its other bromine atom. So, but bromine again, just like mercury did earlier, says don't form a carbocation. I've got lone pairs and I will form a bond to both carbons of the alkene so we can avoid forming a carbocation. So, and in this structure, every atom is going to have a filled octet, and this is definitely much more stable than an actual carbocation. So, hence where we're going with this. So, and in this case, we're going to form, this is your bromonium ion. That's that intermediate in this reaction. So, we're also going to form a bromide ion for the one that broke off here. So and in this case, again, these two carbons that are bonded to the bromine share the partial positive charge of it. So, but the more substituted one here shares more of it. And as a result, that's where bromide can attack with a lower activation energy. So we're going to do backside attack right here. That's going to break open the three-membered ring. And when you do backside attack again on a three-membered ring, you always attack from the opposite side of the other member of that ring. So in this case, the two bromines are going to end up on opposite sides in the product. So they are added to opposite faces, net result. So in this case, we're going to have a bromine here, and we're also going to have added a bromine here. Now, unlike some of the other reactions we've looked at here, we formed a chiral center right here, and we formed a chiral center right here. And when you form two chiral centers, that's when your stereospecificity really, really matters. And so in this case, we have to recall that it's an anti-addition. If you've got two chiral centers in a molecule, so you've got a chance of four stereoisomers existing, but with anti-addition, we will only form two of those four. And so in this case, one bromine could be on a wedge, and then for anti-addition, the other one would have to be added on a dash. That means the methyl group's on a wedge on that carbon there. So the alternative is putting this bromine on the dash and the other one on the wedge, which means the methyl group's on a dash as well. So these are your two products. So these are how they would properly draw They're a pair of enantiomers in this case. So I just drew this as kind of a way to help us actually draw the actual correct product. So in this case, because we formed chiral centers, this drawing that I've kind of X'd out would not be sufficient. You'd really want to kind of draw it like so. So this is the first of three kind of bromonium actions we'll look at. And in the next couple of examples, we'll look at what happens if your solvent actually participates in the reaction.